Hello there, people of the internet. So I just got done making a Sega 12 video, and uh, I feel like shooting some more today, but man, my arm is sore. <laughs> oh, Nelly, my arm is sore. My arm hasn't been as sore as it is right now since I was 14 and discovered the internet. <laughs> So I decided that <laughs> using a handgun uh, would probably be uh, uh, the best choice for me to go ahead and make another video on. This is a video that I'm going to be making on a handgun that I am borrowing. This is not one that I currently own. I got a friend who's letting me borrow several firearms for the sake of video making, and this is one of those firearms that he's letting me borrow. This right here is, I forget the designation, let me just read it right off the side of the gun. The PA-63 made by FEG Hungary, or Hungary, however it is that you feel like pronouncing that. I've actually got two magazines with this thing and a leather holster for it. So this right here is your pretty much standard uh, communist block sort of sidearm that pretty much popped up all over the world after World War II. Uh, the Tokarev was the original, but <laughs> they simplified it and made it a little bit less powerful and they deem the Tokarev to be a little bit too large, too cumbersome, too heavy, uh, etc., etc. They, the sidearms are not necessarily all that necessary for the applications that they were being used in. This will execute peasants just fine. So we actually have ourselves a little two-tone. I'm not sure if uh, this is made out of steel or aluminum. It looks like aluminum, but it might be steel for all I know. With how lightweight it is. I'm gonna say aluminum, but I'm sure somebody out there is gonna correct me if I'm incorrect. I do not like the location of the mag release on this thing. It's right here and I can't really get to it unless I, <laughs> my bowling pin just fell down, unless I break my grip on the gun. Like with a 1911, I could just drop the mag, pop a new one in really easy and keep going. But this one, I have to really break my grip on the gun in order to get around to the magazine release. But anyone who knows, oh, anything about these guns or has used these guns at any real capacity knows uh, how simple and reliable these are. I think they're reliable just based off their own simplicity. There's not a lot that can go wrong with these. Um, a lot of your modern handguns have some sort of locking system or delayed blowback or something like that. This is just straight blowback and you can tell that because the barrel does not move. There is also no slide release on this thing. <laughs> you got a safety on this thing that actually has a built-in decocker, but there's no slide release on this thing. Uh, now this is both single action and double action. As you can see, I'm pulling the trigger and the hammer is slowly coming back. I'll only be using it in single action because I'm not a real big fan of double action. I mean, it's good if you're carrying, but other than that, I'm not a real big fan of double action, as I think everybody can agree with me on that. So this right here, or this style of firearm, is pretty much what replaced the Tokarev as the standard sidearm in all of your com block creation uh, countries out there. They adopted that and pretty much some sort of AK-47 variant. Some sort of eight millimeter, or not eight millimeter, some sort of nine millimeter Makarov sidearm and some sort of AK variant are like your standard go-to after World War II communist weapons. That was used over there on that side of the world for a long time. As a matter of fact, I'm fairly certain that these are still in use in many, many places. Uh, around the world. I'm not sure if they're used by any first world countries uh, in their main forces, but I am positive that they are at least in reserve forces or maybe uh, police units or things like that. Now I myself have actually never fired one of these styles of handguns. Um, I have a Tokarev that barely works, but I do have a Tokarev. And I have shot the 762 Tokarev munitions out of that, but the Tokarev is a tilting barrel action. It's a lot like uh, a lot like a 1911, just single stack, tilting barrel, browning action. But this right here, the the uh, PA, PA and some numbers, the PA-63. The PA-63 is just a straight blowback system. And that is exactly, uh, well, that is good enough for a 9x18 Makarov round. If you start getting into your more higher pressured calibers, like uh, pretty much anything that is more intermediate to rifle calibers, that's when you start wanting a locking system, but these are plenty low powered enough, the pressures are low enough uh, to where you don't need a locking system, just the mass 
of your slide and bolt or whatever it is that you're whatever system it is that you're uh, using to launch this lead uh, the mass of whatever that is combined that with a spring tension for whatever cycling it is more than enough to prevent the bolt from opening there's a spider on my camera prevent the bolt from op opening too quickly and blowing out a case head okay well I have just five rounds of ammunition in this thing like I said I've never fired one of these before the sights on it mediocre at best they're just I mean we just have a little v-notch rear sight and just the tiniest little front post <laughs> but uh i'm curious to see what kind of recoil we're gonna have with this thing normally with sp straight blowback guns you've got pretty significant recoil just because there's a lot of mass in the slide but this doesn't seem like it would have a whole lot of mass behind it and it seems like a lot of the recoil absorption is going to be from the spring itself because the spring in this thing is quite stiff so the bowling pin has fallen down, and I feel like it needs to be punished for that, so I'm going to go ahead and execute it like the peasant it is. Alright, I mean, it's not overly powerful. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like I just fired a, a hot 380. Not quite to the point of 9mm, but a little bit, a little bit more than 380. And I mean, that makes sense. Am I hitting the ground? I am hitting the ground. There we go, that hit the bowling pin. Okay. So 380 is what, 9 by 17? This is 9 by 18. The normal uh, 9 millimeter is 9 by 19. So this right here is a good, comfortable middle ground. First impressions? Uh, <laughs> the handgun is big, heavy, bulky, clunky. Uh, it's a single stack magazine. I'm pretty sure it would hold like let's see six at least six rounds probably more like seven actually at least seven rounds probably more like eight I'm not entirely sure myself I'm just gonna keep loading in five round increments cuz that's uh <laughs> that's what I feel like taking out of the box not only that but these magazines are exceptionally stiff and loading past five rounds is annoying and cumbersome so I was hitting the ground on the first couple of rounds on that thing that tells me that this thing fires a little bit low I'm going to go ahead and aim for our steel silhouette out there, assuming that I can even hit it. I'm not the greatest <laughs> greatest shot with a pistol, but doesn't mean I can't at least give it a try. I think I saw a dirt fly on that one, so that tells me that we are hitting low. Let me try aiming a little bit higher. There we go, wow, okay. So this does hit low. It hits actually pretty significantly low. I was aiming, oh, I'd say to the top of the wheel on that one, and I heard the steel go clank. So this bad boy does hit a little bit low, but at least it is a comfortable shooting gun. I know I said it's big, heavy, bulky, clunky, but it fires just such a tiny little round. What is this? 100 grain full metal jackets. It fires just such a tiny little round at not all that much velocity. With the gun being as heavy as it is, it's not, it's, it's, I mean, it's not the most pleasurable gun I've ever shot by any stretch of the imagination, but it's definitely not, not one of the worst. But much like the AK and its simplicity makes the AK extraordinarily, extraordinarily reliable, this thing right here and its simplicity makes this thing extraordinarily reliable as well. Both the AK and the sidearm that oftentimes goes with it, uh, they are... How do I say this? The people that designed and made them cared more about consistent functionality than they, than they did about the comfort and uh, how comfortable they were to actually use. So I can definitely see that. This right here, like I said, is not the most uncomfortable gun, but it's far from the most comfortable. Just like the AK is not the most comfortable uh, rifle to shoot, but it's far from the most uncomfortable. I'd say probably the G3 is, is the least comfortable semi-automatic firearm I've, 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 I've ever had the pleasure of shooting. Alright, let's see if I can hit that again. I'm aiming real high. There we go. Alright, wow, that is... Okay. <laughs> Alright, yeah. I'd say this thing shoots probably about, oh, I don't know. A foot and a half low at this 40 yards that we're shooting at. Don't get me wrong, if we had somebody that was the size of a person out there and we were lobbing lead at them, we would hit them. But 
This isn't exactly a target gun, however, it was never really intended to be a target gun. You know what, just because I'm having a good time, I'm a load of <laughs> a few more rounds. Five more rounds, I'm gonna send some more at the steel silhouette, and I guess I'll launch some at uh, our paper target out there. Although the paper target at this point is so dramatically torn asunder that, my goodness, these magazines are stiff, that there's no way in hell we'll be able to see where our rounds are actually hitting. But it would still be fun to launch some lead. All right, I'm gonna aim at the top of our bowling pin right there. Well, it's been hit a couple of times. Now let's go for the black target out there. I'm sure that we hit it, although we'll never be able to tell where that round went. Okay, well, uh, like I said, this is not the most comfortable gun and it is kind of tearing my hand up a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I would, I would definitely prefer something modern uh, just because the, the grip of most of your modern guns are gonna be a lot less aggressive than this one. This one right here, the beaver tail on it. <laughs> I'm trying to choose my words very, very carefully here. The beaver tail on this thing is very atrociously angled. There we go, that's, that's how I'm gonna word that. Very atrociously angled, and every time you fire it, the recoil just absolutely digs it right into your hand. And I'm definitely seeing that. It is uh, <laughs> quite uncomfortable, actually. That being said, this thing is still fun to shoot. I mean, if eight millimeter Makarov ammunition was more available and not quite as expensive it is, as it is nowadays, like if, if we were in the time period where the eight, uh, nine millimeter Makarov ammunition was, you know, dirt cheap like it was back in the day, I'd probably look into getting myself one of these from you know, my own collection. But it's uncomfortable, it's heavy, it's bulky. I just don't really foresee me using this. I don't foresee me getting one, but I am glad that I had the chance to film with one because I got to actually experience one of these. And in the long run, it is the experience with the firearms <laughs> versus uh, your decisions on the firearms that really matters. I much rather have experience with things that I like or dislike, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that I dislike this gun, I'm just not saying that I would go out of my way to spend the three, four, five hundred dollars that these things are bringing in nowadays. So, of course, that is just my opinion. By all means, if you are a hardcore fan of these guns, then you can stockpile them all you want. Go right ahead. All right, I'm gonna put this bad boy back into the holster here. I feel like, I feel like if this was just a little bit more ergonomic if if the magazine release was just a little bit lower if it actually had a slide release uh, if that beaver tail wasn't quite as sharp as it is uh, then this would be not that bad of a little handgun but it was still fun to come out here and check it out this is the first time I've gotten the chance to check out a handgun of this genre of this nature uh, something that I mean there's so many countries out there that made basically this and there's so many different variations out there. I don't wanna, I don't want to go knocking all of the variations because this right here is just the Hungarian PA-63. I think that was the number designation to it. Uh, but this right here is just that version of this uh, style of handgun, but there's so many out there. There were so many millions of them made and so many different versions. Uh, this right here is just the first one that I've gotten the chance to shoot in nine by 18. All right. Well, now not only does my arm hurt, but my hand hurts. <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, I still have things to do tonight, too. Wonderful. Well, ladies and gentlemen, lady and gentlemen, actually, I've seen my YouTube analytics. I know that it's literally just dudes here. Thanks for watching. <laughs> I hope you guys had fun. Uh, I did. I mean... I just came out here and popped off a couple of rounds into a bowling pin and an old car that I got sitting on my property, but hey, that's pretty much what I live for at this point. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you like more. If you uh, like the video, then actually like the video. That helps out with the algorithm. Description down below has a bunch of links to all sorts of stuff. Uh, I never really know how else to end these videos, so I'm just going to say, hey, thanks for watching. You guys go off of a fantastic day. I got a big mess here that I have to clean up because I did a lot of shooting today. And boy, 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 oh boy, is it messy. Coffee first. I'm going to go get some coffee. Thanks for watching, guys.
since I've done this. Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs> Poor man's Garen. <laughs> it's a shame that bolt-action shotguns aren't uh, more mainstream.